What's up, Falcons Nation? It's your boy, Ju, coming at you with another Atlanta Falcons video. As always, Falcons Nation, rise up. In today's video, I want to talk about uh, my pregame predictions for this Monday night football game between the Atlanta Falcons and the Green Bay Packers. Um, but as always, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you'll know when I've done Atlanta Falcons content. Uh, hit that like button for your boy. I appreciate you guys continuing to tune into the channel, continuing to help me grow the channel. But as always, let's jump right into the video. So as I was stating, I do want to go ahead and talk about uh, my pregame predictions for this Monday night football game against the Green Bay Packers. Um, this game will take place uh, at Lambeau Field uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So I'm really looking forward to this game on Monday night. Um, as you know, uh, Green Bay is uh, a hard um, a hard place to play, uh, Lambeau Field. I'm just glad that it's not going to be cold outside. Um, it's not going to be one of those games where it's going to be uh, 10 below zero. Um, it should be pretty nice weather for this time of year uh, for the fall. Um, but I'm really looking forward to this football game come Monday night. Um, if you haven't seen already, uh, some of the injury uh, injury report has already come out uh, for some of the players that's going to be out for this game for our Atlanta Falcons. Um, Tack McKinley, he's going to be out with that groin again, um, which is big for us um, in that pass in our pass rush. Um, Keanu Neal is going to be out this game with a hamstring injury. Uh, him and Ricardo Allen is going to be out this game, uh, so it's going to be Demonte Casey. Um, getting the uh, playing the free safety role, and I believe it's going to be the the kid Jalen Hawkins that's going to fill the role of playing strong safety. Um, this could be a good or a bad thing uh, in this game. Um, a good thing about it is we finally will get to see uh, the young tandem uh, uh, safeties back there. We can see what the kid Jalen Hawkins has to offer, um, and Demonte Casey. We can see um, how these guys pair up together. Uh, as young safeties for our Atlanta Falcons. Um, I talked about it a little bit before in one of my other videos that sometimes when it's next man up, this is how you may find a diamond, you know, a diamond in the rough. You never know, um, you know, what you have on your bench sometimes. If you remember a couple seasons ago when DeMonte Casey, uh, DeMonte Casey got the starting job uh, when Rico Allen and uh, Keanu Neal went down with injury, he came and you know, he was the next man up and he rose uh, He rose to the occasion. So um, he ended up leading the league in interceptions. I believe that was in 2018 uh, when DeMonte Casey actually filled in for the injured uh, Ricardo Allen and the injured uh, Keanu Neal. So this is in this game, this could be big for us to finally see uh, what the kid Jalen Hawkins has to offer. Um, as you know, after this season, um, we possibly may move on from a Keanu Neal. We also may move on from a Ricardo Allen. Both of those guys, I believe Ricardo Allen is under contract for at least another year. But I believe um, Keanu Neal is actually, they signed his fifth-year option. So I believe Keanu Neal after this season would be a restricted free agent, if I'm not mistaken. So this is uh, Jalen Hawkins' chance to kind of show what he has. Um, like I said, he is a young, uh, up-and-coming safety. So we're going to be able to see um, how well he plays on Monday night. Uh, good news in the secondary, we will be getting back uh, Kendall Sheffield, uh, the uh, cornerback out of the University of Ohio State. Um, you know, you guys, I've talked about him before as well. Um, he plays with great speed. He's kind of like that Robert Alford type, a great athlete, uh, physical, um, has great vertical leap, does a great job of high pointing the football. And he's one of those guys that can intercept the football and take the ball away. Um, and if Devontae Adams plays in this game, that could be a big matchup. Uh, Kendall Sheffield versus Devontae Adams. Personally, if I'm the Atlanta Falcons, I would have uh, Kendall Sheffield follow Devontae Adams around. If he ends up playing in this game, I definitely think that um, I would have uh, Kendall Sheffield travel 
with Devontae Adams because Devontae Adams is one of the best route runners in the game. He is a great wide receiver uh, for the Green Bay Packers. He was out last week uh, with an injury, so I'm not too sure if he's going to play Monday night. But if he does end up playing, I think that they should have Kendall Sheffield possibly follow him around the field, especially with all of the injuries that we kind of have um, at the uh, the cornerback position. It may be smart for us to um, have uh, Kendall Sheffield, the speedster, follow uh, follow um, Devontae Adams around in this game because he's a guy that can go inside and outside, whether it's in the slot or where they're playing outside. Last season, Kendall Sheffield um, played on the outside and he played the nickel position. And with Darquez Denard going down, uh, being placed on IR for the next uh, three weeks, a uh, short-term IR, um, we're really uh, shorthanded at the cornerback position. Now, we are also getting back um, Jordan Miller, the cornerback out of the University of Washington. He's another guy that could come in in this game and kind of show us what he has. I don't know uh, much about the kid uh, other than he was a solid player in college, but he hasn't played a ton of games in the NFL. So this is his chance to, uh, to shine in the bright lights. Monday Night Football, a standalone game pretty much where everybody, the whole NFL and the whole nation is watching. So this could be um, a breakout game for some of these guys that's uh, never had that this type of spotlight uh, as far as playing in the NFL. Uh, for the Jalen Hawkins of the world and the Jordan Millers of the world, this is their time to you know step up and show uh, the Atlanta Falcons what they have, show the fans what they have, and possibly you know uh, come in and take some of these veteran guys' uh, position. Um, but with that being said, um, we also had a couple other injuries on the injury report. Julio Jones is battling at hamstring. He did have his media session, and he said that he's not really 100%, but he said with those soft tissue injuries, you know, you never feel quite right. You never know, you know, when something may, you know, you might tweak something, but he is planning to go on Monday night. I do believe Julio Jones will be out there. He, noticed, uh, he knows that this is a, a make-or-break game for Atlanta Falcons, being that we're 0-3. Um, this is a big game, and I believe Julio Jones is one of those type of players. If he's not seriously injured, he's one of those guys that's going to play. So I expect Julio Jones to play. Um, Calvin Ridley is another guy uh, battling an ankle injury for us, and they're saying that him and Julio Jones are questionable uh, for this game against Green Bay on Monday night. I do expect both guys to be out there on, uh, on Monday night. Uh, Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones, um, those guys are used to winning. They're not used to these type of losing streaks. Both of those guys played at Alabama, where they probably never went on a three-game losing streak. They barely probably lost three games in their whole uh, college or collegiate career. So those guys are the ultimate competitors. I expect both of those guys to be out there on Monday night. Will they be able to hold up the whole game? Uh, knock on wood, I'm not too sure, but I expect both of those guys to be out there. Um, they are the best uh, duo wide receiver tandem in the league. Um, also, at the wide receiver position, um, we will have Russell Gage. Um, I believe he will play in this game. He's practiced all week, even though last week he had a concussion. Um, things are looking up for him to possibly play in this game as well. And we're going to need all the firepower we can get because we're really banged up on the defensive side of the ball. So. Uh, we definitely are going to need, um, you know, all of the bullets in the chamber for Matt Ryan. He's going to need all of his weapons out there so we can expose this Green Bay defense. I definitely think anytime Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley, uh, Russell Gage and those guys are out there with Matt Ryan, I feel like I don't care who we're playing against. We always have a chance to uh, win games when Matt Ryan and Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley out there on the field because they are the cream of the crop at their positions. And anytime you have a great historic quarterback, a great, um, great wide receivers, they always give you a chance to win because in, in today's NFL, um, it's about scoring points. Yes, defense does win championships. But if you look around the league right now, um, it's about the offenses. If you look at the teams that play uh, great on the offensive side of the ball and play solid on defense, you know, those are the teams that are, you know, winning currently the Kansas City Chiefs of the world, the Green Bay Packers of the world. Neither one of those defenses are great, but they have great quarterbacks and they have great weapons on the outside uh, at running back and uh, at wide receiver. So I really think that our Atlanta Falcons can beat anybody in the NFL. I definitely think in this game, um, we're going to need our offense to put up points as always. I do think that it might be a shootout. 
because Green Bay, you know, can score put points on the board. Right now they're leading the league in scoring, I believe. Um, if I, uh, if I uh, looked at that correctly, I believe that Green Bay currently is number one in scoring, almost scoring 40 points a game. Um, but the Atlanta Falcons are not too far behind them. Um, I believe the first game of the season we scored like 25 against Seattle. Then um, against Dallas, we put up 39 points. And then last week um, against the Chicago Bears, I believe we put up uh, 20 some points. So the Falcons, um, when we have all of our weapons out there, we are one of those teams that also can uh, score the ball and put points on the board. So I expect um, with Julio Jones being back out there, Calvin Ridley and Russell Gage, and then um, Todd Gurley and Brian Hill in the backfield, I really think that um, we definitely can put up points in this game. We can score in the upper 30s, maybe even 40 points in this game. Green Bay doesn't have a very stout defense. Um, they have a solid defense, but it's not very stout. They're giving up a ton of yards and a ton of points right now. So I definitely think that our Falcons have a great chance of going in to win this game. I know a lot of people uh, don't have our Falcons. Um, they're not giving our Falcons a chance to win this game, but I really think that our Falcons are going to shock a lot of people. Um, as you know, excuse me, as you know, um, as our Falcons, we always seem to play down our competition. But if we be honest about it, we really should be two on one right now. Um, we played so far. We played against Seattle, who's one of the best teams in the NFC right now, one of the best teams in the league. Uh, they're currently 3-0. We face the Chicago Bears, who's currently 3-0 as well. And we face the Dallas Cowboys, who's 1-2. and um, But we all know how uh, talented that Dallas Cowboy roster is. So I really think that um, we have a great chance of going in Lambeau and pulling the upset, even though we're on three. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, as far as injuries, um, we do have a four-year Luacon coming back this week, which could be big for us. Him and Deion Jones, I feel like, are two of the best sideline to sideline uh, linebackers in the game, two of the best coverage linebackers in the game. And we seen when the foyer was out there um, in week two, he forced three fumbles against the Dallas Cowboys, which was big for us. And if we can get uh, a foyer a little combat, back, he's definitely one of the playmakers on that defensive side of the ball. Him and Deion Jones are going to need to have an excellent game covering out of the backfield because Green Bay is a tall around the field. And they do have um, one of the better running backs in the game, up and coming running backs, and Aaron Jones. He's one of those guys that is uh, like a Devontae Freeman. He reminds me of Devontae Freeman, very quick, um, like a scat back, can catch the ball out of the backfield can run the ball out of the backfield, um, likes to run on the edges, and he's very quick. Um, so Deion Jones and LaFoya Luacon is going to have their hands full with those guys. Um, they also have Mercedes Lewis at that tight end position, um, who's been in the league a very long time, is a very savvy uh, savvy veteran um, who, who caught a touchdown pass last week against the Saints. So LaFoya Luacon is also going to have his hands full covering uh, those tight ends um, out of the backfield. or. Um, in the passing game, um, I think Alan Lazard, um, he was a guy that had a big game last week for Green Bay. He's one of the wide receivers. He's actually out this game with a core injury. So I believe they're going to uh, start the kid, uh, Valdez Scantling, who's a, he's a really big wide receiver. Goes about 6'3 six, uh, six, or 6'4, six, and he's more of a possession receiver. He's a really big guy. But Alan Lazard was their breakout star last week against the Saints. I believe he had two touchdowns, if I'm not mistaken, but he had over 100 yards receiving. So that's one break that the Atlanta Falcons are going to get in this game that Alan, uh, Alan Lazard, uh, Lazard is not playing. Um, on the defensive side of the ball for Green Bay, um, to me, they have two of the best cornerback tandems in the game with Kevin King and um, Jair Alexander. Those guys are very good cover corners out on the edges, but I'll take my chances with Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley um, like I said, those guys are just all world tight wide receivers. I don't care who you match up on the outside against those guys because they're all pros. Um, you know, I don't really think that those guys can cover Julio Jones and stop Julio Jones. Um, and I'm really not too afraid of the defense um, for the Green Bay Packers. Um, they do have the Smith boys or the Smith brothers uh, on the outside of uh, Darius Smith and Preston Smith, the two defensive ends. Um, those guys are uh, pretty good pass rushers. Um, 
Um, both of them got both of those guys can get after the pass on the edges. So I feel like in this game, our Falcons are going to have to do an excellent job of slowing down the pass rush. And the way that you slow down the pass rush is you stay balanced. Um, I really feel like um, we haven't run the ball enough. Todd Gurley has been running the ball very well between the tackles. He hasn't really had any huge runs for like over 20 plus yards or anything like that. But he has had a couple runs for about 10 to 15 yards. And he's looked really good running downhill, doing, taking that one cut, putting his foot in the ground and going downhill. Uh, Brian Hill has actually been the home run hitter for our team. And I feel like we need to use that tandem a little bit more, especially in this game against Green Bay, because Green Bay is one of the worst teams that stop in the run. Um, if you remember, like I said, last year in the NFC Championship game, um, basically the 49ers ran the ball down their throat. They threw the ball, like I believe it was six or seven times the whole game, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, and they basically ran the ball. Kyle Shanahan, as the offensive coordinator, just basically ran the ball right at the teeth of that defense for Green Bay. And Green Bay um, is one of the, um, you know, one of the weaker run-stopping teams in the, in the game. So I really feel like, Todd Gurley in this game and Brian Hill could really have a big day on the ground. I think that we do need to uh, run the ball so we can shorten the game. Uh, the less uh, time you leave on the clock, the less possessions you give Aaron Rodgers, the better. Uh, the best way to defeat Aaron Rodgers is keep him on the sideline. So we want to keep our offense on the field and have methodical drives. We don't want to let Aaron Rodgers get into a rhythm. We don't want to put Aaron Rodgers in that offense on short fields. So we're going to have to protect the football as uh, as our Atlanta Falcons. We're going to have to protect the football. We can't make um, a ton of mistakes. We can't put the ground on the ball with fumbles. Um, we can't throw interceptions. Matt Ryan has to be very careful with the football because they do uh, have optimistic uh, corners and they do have pretty good safeties as well. They have a kid, I believe his name is Denar Savage. He's one of those guys that uh, one of those guys they drafted last year. I believe he went to the University of Maryland. He's an up and coming safety, and he's a guy that is a playmaker, um, an up and coming safety young guy. And then they have uh, Amos, who's been a journeyman, but he's a hard hitter. He's one of those guys. If you come across the middle, he's like a he's like a Keanu Neal type, um, one of those thumpers. He's not great in coverage, but he's good. He's like a box safety. He's good at making. Um, hard hits. He played for the Chicago Bears for a little bit, and he's played for a number of other teams, but he's one of those guys um, that can force fumbles and stuff like that. So we have to be very careful in this game to make sure we protect the football. We've done a pretty good job the first three games of not turning the ball over. Um, Matt Ryan has seven touchdowns and only two interceptions on the season. I don't even believe we have any fumbles. I don't think that Todd Gurley or um, Brian Hill has fumbled at all this season. So we've done a pretty good job of protecting the football and we've done a good job of winning the turnover battle for the most part um, so far this season. We just have to do a better job at finishing games. So in this game, it's going to be very important um, for us to um, not have the turnovers, um, also not have penalties because Aaron Rodgers is one of those quarterbacks that likes to uh, do that hard count and get your guys jumping offside so he can try to throw the ball down the field and take chances. So Grady Jarrett, um, John Kaminsky and those guys, uh, Chris Harris, I mean, I believe his name is Charles Harris. I'm sorry, Charles Harris uh, on the edge. He actually made his debut last week, him and Marlon Davidson. Both of those guys made their debut, and they had pretty um, pretty good games last week for Atlanta Falcons. Charles Harris, uh, Charles Harris had his first sack. Um, with the Atlanta, uh, the Atlanta Falcons, uh, Marlon Davidson, I believe he had one tackle uh, in the backfield against um, the Chicago Bears in the run game, but he did a solid job when he was out there. So I'm looking for a big game for my defensive line in this game. We're going to need Dante Fowler. He's one of those guys that is also battling an ankle injury, but I expect him to play. He's been battling that ankle injury all season, but I think he, um, I expect Dante Fowler to have a big game. Uh, this Monday night in the spotlight, he did um, have a, uh, give a speech in a locker room last week after the game. And I do believe that Dante Fowler is one of the leaders on this defense. Um, he's one of the vocal leaders and he's one of the guys that out, uh, actually plays with the edge. And you need those guys on defense that plays with that edge, um, that plays, um, has that rough, that rough mentality. 
and a guy that's not going to back down. And I love that about Dante Fowler. I think that he has brought um, some toughness to this team. Um, nothing against Vic Beasley, but I just think that he's one of those guys that's going to be vocal. He's going to be like that bully out there on the field. He's going to talk trash and he's going to motivate uh, his guys around him and rally the troops. So I do think that uh, Grady Jarrett and Dante Fowler, I expect both of those guys to have big games. I expect a, a sack from both of those guys, a forced fumble, uh, possibly by Dante Fowler screaming off the edge um, and possibly sacking uh, Aaron Rodgers and maybe knocking the football out of his hand. In this game, we're going to have to be smart on the defensive line. Um, our guys are going to have to do a good job of getting their hands up because Aaron Rodgers has one of the fastest uh, releases in the game as far as throwing the football. So if you can't get to him, if you're throwing that ball within two or three seconds with those uh, quick, you know, drop down passes, those those swing passes to Aaron Jones and those quick slant patterns to Devonta Adams, we have to uh, get our hands up um, as a defense on a defensive line. We have to make sure we try to tip a football and possibly cause a turnover, cause an interception. I really could see in this game, uh, DeMonte Casey or one of those guys coming away with an interception. Um, this week, I expect to see a lot more of Bleedy Way Wilson uh, playing in this game as well. He had a pretty good game last week. He had an interception um, against Mitchell Trubisky, um, and he really played really well. We're really going to need um, Isaiah Oliver in this game to step up. He's been struggling the last couple games. But at this point, we have to throw them out there because we're really shorthanded uh, in the defensive back side. So we're definitely going to need uh, Isaiah Oliver to come out with that confidence. He played a pretty good game last week. Um, he almost had an interception when Nick Foles threw the ball in triple coverage. So we're definitely going to need to finish plays in this game. It's been a ton of games this, uh, this year where we've left plays out there. But in this game, we can't afford to have any mental mistakes any mental lapses. We're going to need those guys to come out there and play a clean game. We're going to make mistakes. You don't have to go out there and play a perfect game because Green Bay is not world beaters. I've watched pretty much, um, you know, most of their games this season. I watched them play last week against uh, New Orleans on Sunday Night Football, and those guys are really bad. Um, you know, they are really bad on defense. They don't really have a great defense. They're bad at that linebacker position. Um, their linebackers are not good cover linebackers. They have guys that come downhill in the run game, but they're not good in uh, coverage. So I expect Matt Ryan to possibly take advantage of that uh, with Hayden Hurst. I expect Hayden Hurst to have a touchdown in this game and possibly have um, a couple of explosive plays going down the field. I think that we need to use uh, Hayden Hurst more in those crossing patterns, and we need to do um, use Hayden Hurst more in stretching the field um, down the center of the field on those seam routes. I really think that we have, a do, uh, have to do a better job at scheming up plays for Hayden Hurst. He did have a long touchdown catch against the Dallas Cowboys, but we have to take advantage of Hayden Hurst's athletic ability. I feel like Dirk Cutter hasn't done a good job so far this season of giving um, Hayden Hurst or Todd Gurley and Brian Hill enough um, touches on offense. I really think that those guys need more touches I feel like too, it was they were forcing the ball a little bit too much last week to Calvin Ridley. And once Russell Gage went down with injury last week, um, it was easy for the Chicago Bears to kind of uh, double and triple team Calvin Ridley. And that's how they end up getting that interception at the end of the game where uh, Calvin Ridley ran the wrong route. But even with Calvin Ridley running that wrong route at the end of the game, um, Chicago had three guys around him in that zone coverage. So we're really going to need – all the offensive pieces we can get, um, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, um, Russell Gage, when we have all of our weapons out there, Hayden Hurst, um, it makes it really tough for defenses to guess who's getting the football on key down. So I think it's really important in this game uh, that we spread the football around. It's going to be really important that we have – I will run the ball at least 35 to 40 times in this game. Um, I would give Todd Gurley at least 20 touches in this game, and I would give – uh, Brian Hill, at least 10 to 15 touches in this game. And I would try to eat, eat away at that clock, especially if we get a lead. Um, in the last two games in the fourth quarter, we've had 16-point uh, leads, 15-point leads. So we have to do a better job at the end of the game of closing out these games. And the way you do that is you salt the game away by running the football. So in this game, it's going to be very important at the end of the game. If we have the lead, 
we definitely need to run the football, drain the clock. Um, we were able to run the ball really well last week against the Chicago Bears, and Chicago has a better defense than the Green Bay Packers. So I expect our running backs, I expect Todd Gurley to have his first 100 rushing yard game uh, this season. Um, I expect Brian Hill to possibly run for another uh, 70 to 80 yards in this game as well and possibly catch some passes out of the backfield. But I want to see uh, Matt Ryan getting that ball out of his hands quick. We also need to stretch the field, as I was saying, with Hayden Hurst. And then on the defensive side of the ball, we must get pressure on Aaron Rodgers. We can't let him get into a rhythm. So I want to see um, us switching things up like we kind of did last week. To me, last week, the defense called uh, the Dan Quinn and um, Raheem Morris. I believe both of those guys called a pretty good game on defense. We were blitzing. We were running cover two. We were um, running cover three. Uh, we ran some man coverage. So I think they did a good job last week of mixing it up and bringing some blitzes and things of that nature. I think they did a good job of bringing in uh, fresh bodies. I seen Leroy Reynolds get some snaps uh, where he was coming downhill on first down and second down in the run game, which I think is wise. They were giving Deion Jones and those guys a breather. Uh, a breather. Um, and I think that that's imp uh, very important in this game uh, that we keep these guys fresh. Um, it's very important to give Grady Jarrett uh, some rest, give him a breather, throw Marlon Davidson out there, uh, throw Tyler Davidson out there, throw Allen Bailey and those guys out there, and let's keep this defensive line fresh. Uh, Jacob Tatui, Mariner, all of those guys, let's continue to keep these guys fresh, uh, keep those fresh bodies out there so guys are not getting injured and so guys are not cramping up and things of that nature. But you guys let me know what you think of the video. Um, like I was saying in this game, um, the key players on Green Bay um, to stop really is Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones, um, and Aaron Rodgers. Those are the main guys that we have to worry about in this game. Yes, Aaron Rodgers likes to spread it around, but um, Devontae Adams, if he plays, and Aaron Jones, that's pretty much where the Green Bay Packers, uh, those are their bread and butter. So we got to make sure we make them play left-handed. I talk about this all the time, that you have to take away what teams do great. Uh, one thing that I love about a uh, Bill Belichick um, with the New England Patriots, I can't stand the Patriots, but one thing I love about their coaching style of Bill Belichick is he's one of those guys that he's not going to allow you to uh, go to your number one weapon. He's not going to allow you to do what you do best. He's going to make you play left-handed or he's going to make you go towards your weakness, play towards your weaknesses. And I think the Falcons have to do a good job this week of doubling uh, Devontae Adams and making somebody else beat you. Don't allow uh, Devontae Adams, don't allow Aaron Jones beat you in this game. Make uh, the Mercedes Lewis's of the world, make the Geronimo Allison's and uh, the Valdez Scantlings, make those guys in this game beat you if they're going to beat us. But with that being said, uh, this being your boy, Jew, I'm not going to give any scoring predictions in this game. Um, I just think that the Falcons will come away with the win. Um, or I believe the Falcons have a chance to win this game. I really think that they're going to shock a lot of people in this game. Um, like I said, I really feel like this isn't a bad roster. This is a pretty good Falcons team. I just think that we have to put it all together. Um, we do have injuries, but at this point, it's no more excuses. Uh, man up. It's time for us to go ahead and get a win. And like I say all the time, winning cures all. So I don't care if we win it by a point or if we win it by 20 points. We just need to come away with a victory to get the ball uh, going in the right direction, get the season going in the right direction. Once you start to put up, you know, put some wins on the on the board, you know, the team can actually build more confidence. As you start to win win games, you, you know, the team games confidence, they gain momentum, kind of like we did last year on the back half of the season when we finally start winning some games. It started with that game in New Orleans. Um, where we, we came out after the bye and we went down there and beat the brakes off the New Orleans Saints. So I expect the same thing in this game. I expect the Falcons to come out guns are blazing and I expect the, uh, the Falcons to come out and dominate. I do think that Green Bay is a dangerous team. We all know that Aaron Rodgers is a bad man. And, you know, we definitely going to have to play our A game, you know, come with our best game in this game. We can't afford, like I said, any mistakes, any mental lapses. But I think the Falcons are going to be ready to play. And I believe on defense, we've got enough starters coming back that we should be pretty good. Last week was probably one of the worst weeks ever as far as injuries. We had a ton of guys come, uh, 
out of the game. Uh, as far as Tat McKinley was out, uh, Grady Jarrett went out with an injury. Uh, Afoya Luakon was not out there last week. Ricardo Allen wasn't out there last week. So this week we should be getting back a, a bunch of guys. Um, Foyer Luakon and those guys coming back, that should be big. Um, Kendall Sheffield, I really feel like it's going to be a huge deal with him coming back um, on that defensive uh, in that defensive backfield. Him and Jordan Miller, I think they're going to be like a shot in the arm to those guys back there who's been playing. Last week, we actually had practice squad guys that we had to bring up from our practice squad playing because we had so many injuries. So I definitely think the defense is going to be improved. I expect the offense to be much improved with Julio Jones being back, where the team can't just key in on Calvin Ridley. And I expect a big game out of our Atlanta Falcons. Like I said, I do believe it's going to be a high scoring game. But you guys let me know what you think in the comments. Um, do you think the Falcons are going to win this game? Uh, what's your score predictions? I don't want to really give a score prediction. I just I just think that the Falcons will put up at least 30 points in this game. And I think we'll come away with the victory. Um, but you guys continue to tune into the channel. Continue to like, share, subscribe. Uh, before you leave the channel, definitely hit that subscribe button for your boy. Um, but this being your boy, Ju, I'll holler at you guys in the next video. And as always, Falcons Nation, rise up. Peace. I'll holler at you guys.